Well, shooters and reloaders out there, Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone, and Halloween is coming up. And to celebrate Halloween, there's so many people out there doing their decorations and all this kind of thing. Let's celebrate by loading up some orange 38 caliber, 357 caliber bullets. These are orange, powder coated with the Eastwood orange, and it has highlights in there. And we won't discuss that, but uh, just make them a little more decorative for Halloween. Well, as you know, the 38 Special was introduced in 1898 as a black powder cartridge originally. And it didn't take long for Smokeless to go into the 38 Special, but then in 1935, the case was lengthened and turned into the 357 Magnum, much more powerful ammunition. Well, what we're gonna do today to celebrate Halloween is we're gonna use the 357 Magnum case, and these are Remington Peters. Instead of the 38 Specials, these are Winchester cases. We want more power in our black powder loading using the Hodgen 777 3 FG. And the bigger 357 Magnum case will give us more power with that black powder substitute. It's like this is the 4570 and this is the 4555 Dable. So here's our Hodgden 777 3 FG powder. And as you know, it's not recommended by the factory to use 3 FG in cartridges, but it works splendidly in cartridges. Let's go ahead and give it a try in the 357 caliber. By the way, for those of you who are wondering, these loading blocks are the flambeau loading blocks from the 1970s. And they're very good because they have two sides to them for different sizes. This is 38 special, this is 45. But the flambeau loading blocks were special because they hold 60 rounds. And that gives you a real good way to do 50 with a 10 open spacing. And that's kind of nice. These were designed to make the PPC shooters back in the 70s very happy because we could reload 60 rounds and that's a magic number for PPC competition. It's too bad these are unavailable now. They've been out of production for quite a while. So we really can't tell you how to reload. So we're not going to do that. It's taboo on YouTube. But suffice to say, we take our MT cartridge case. It's been cleaned by wet tumbling, of course. So what we got to do first is to put this 357 Magnum case through the squeezer and uh, put the big squeeze on it and also and also kick the brains out of it and uh, that's what we're doing right there. These are nice looking cases, don't you think? Well, next you can't sing until you clear the throat and uh, also get ready to put a little bell on the mouth so that we can really sing. So you see there? So you see there, we got the throat open and the little mouth bell ready to go. And uh, this happens to be a device called an RCBS Bench Prime tool. And what it does, installs these small pistol magnum primers made in Russia. So we got a Russian collusion here, Russian. But anyway, we're going to use these fine small pistol magnum primers by Tula from Russia. And the way this works is you pull the pin to let the primers flow down, and then you go ahead and put a primer right there on that little stem. And then when you put a case in there that needs one of these little primers in there, you can go ahead and install that primer and feel it go all the way in. Like that. 
and we just go ahead and do them all because as you see, you just keep going, going ahead and feeding those in. Like that. And you'll have them all primed in no time. Well, as all of you know out there, the thing about loading black powder or black powder substitutes that's very different than using smokeless powder is that this black powder needs to have zero airspace behind the bullet. In other words, you need a hundred percent loading density. You cannot have airspace. You can have that with smokeless, but not with black powder. Dangerous pressures will happen. In fact, the recommendation is a little bit of compression. So you want like a hundred and five percent loading density. Which means that in the 357 Magnum case, we have to figure out how much powder it will take to fill all the way up to the base of the bullet when the bullet is seated. Well, we figured that out. If you take a fired 40 caliber Smith & Wesson case and the fired primer is still in there, if you trim the case back to 0.783 inches, that when you dip this in the black powder, it fills that powder space in the 357 Magnum perfectly to the base of the bullet. And in fact, gives it a little bit of compression. And this is using the Lee 358 158 grain semi wad cutter tumble lube and using the top tumble lube groove for a crimping groove. Now, of course, that includes a very thin cardboard wad that we use on top of the powder. That's an over powder wad before the bullet goes in. To make those wads, we take a 38 special case and your squeezer die with the little punch taken out of it. This is the punch. This is what punches the dead primer out. We take that out of the die here and then that allows us to punch out these wads. And what we're going to use is just a regular primer cardboard and you simply put your cardboard over the mouth of the die and you punch out and you punch out the wad like that. You see? And you just keep doing that till you have all the wads you need. So there you see the wads punched out and they're just fine. So now measuring the triple seven three FG by volume is simple. Take our measure, dip it down into the powder, bring it straight up, level it off like this, and then pour it into the case like this. We just repeat that as many times as you want. I hope you notice the orange of the Lyman All-American Eight press. How appropriate for Halloween. Now we take one of our wads, put it in, and then we take a 327 Federal case, or you could use a 30 carbine case, and just press that right down until you have the wad over the powder. So there you see all the wads are placed nicely and we're ready to go ahead and seat the projectile on top of these. So notice the great thing about taking these bullets and as soon as you push it into the case mouth and get it in there, 
so that it's in, it's already square. You don't have to worry about the thing leaning to the side. It's automatically squared up and that's because of the two-step mouth flaring that we accomplished. Now we simply make sure that the crimping shoulder in the die body doesn't engage the case mouth and then we go ahead and adjust the stem to start pushing that projectile down until the case mouth is even to the top tumble loop groove. As you see here. And it's always very good to feel the same kind of pressure when it comes to getting that bullet into the case feels the same, every one of them. As you see. Plus, if there is any bulge caused by the base of the bullet, that bulge is even all the way around. You don't see a prominent bulge on one side and the other side doesn't have a bulge. If you see that, that means the bullet's in there cockeyed. That's not a good thing. But when you see a nice even bulge or no bulge, you're looking good. Finally, we crank over our Lee factory crimp die for the 38 357 Magnum caliber. And so this needs to be adjusted to get the right crimp. The die is already touching the shell holder, so that's perfect. We just, need, we just need to back out this crimping stem so that we don't over crimp the first one. And then we adjust it to get the crimp we want. So here we go. We adjust it by cranking this down until we get the crimp we want. We go ahead and give it a half turn and maybe another quarter turn. There we go, getting the crimp. And then we see how much crimp we got. That looks pretty good. We'll just go ahead and crimp all of them. So here we go everybody. Happy Halloween to all of you out there. Bye for now.